Master Sword Music. TJ the Gamer. Yeah, this the Chrono Show. Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. Plus the gamers round E B. This the Chrono Show. Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. Plus the gamers round E B. This the Chrono Show. Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. Plus the gamers round E B. This the Chrono Show. Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. Plus the gamers round E B. Yeah, this the Chrono Show. Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. Plus got one of the best cast that you have ever seen. You really miss it out if you haven't heard. That this show here to stay, so go past the word Old school or new school, check us out on YouTube It don't matter what you like, we got something for you Just one more thing to say before I start to close Shout out to my homies at the Chrono Show the Chrono Show Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need Plus the gamers round E, B, that's the Chrono Show Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need Plus the gamers round E, B, that's the Chrono Show Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. Plus the gamers round E, B, that's the Chrono Show. Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. Plus the gamers round E, B. Thunder, 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 thundercats. Ho! <laughs> My master is This old olive press stamps out a super pizza, guys. Look! Hey, you can always have a black olive pizza with green olive topping. Never mind him, we've gotta stop this heat ray. I've got an idea. Throw your turtle comms at the lenses. Those bells ought to do it. Well, I only hope the bullhorn amplifies the sound. Okay, I like red. It's my favorite color. Maybe we should have took the blue one. Uh, who do I look like? Captain Nemo? Well, at least we didn't hit a garbage truck. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Wouldn't it be neat if this microscope was so powerful? We could look right into the center of a molecule? A reticule? A molecule! Come on, guys! Those aren't fireflies, Kermit. They're electrons. That's what electricity is made of. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Come on, guys, why don't we take a look? Manny's talking about us. Yeah, brothers and sisters should always be together. <laughs> and now, get set for our fabulous halftime show, featuring the well-groomed young go-getters of Hooray for Everything! Oh, I love those kids! Hollywood's a tough town. Sure, I was a working avocado, but directors, they all had me pegged as the guacamole. Cut! Do you ever go to bed with two socks on and then wake up with only one? I do. Wow, I'd sure love to help you out. But I'm kind of, you know, tied up right now. We're Mo and Joe Wendell at your beck and call. We service all your head needs for winter, spring, and fall. Why don't snakes like to finger paint? Give up? Because they don't have any fingers. Waka, waka, waka. These are the kids running late for class. One more tardy and they may not pass. This is Jan revolting. <laughs> you know, I would have been here about an hour ago, but I was doing some shopping at a department store, and they had a power failure. Uh, isn't it sad uh, you build a comedy robot and give it life, and then it goes nuts and destroys you? Gilbert Gottfried here. I did a movie called Constipation. It never came out. How'd you do, ma'am? My name is Blaine. Voice teacher extraordinaire. Spy to headquarters, come in. Today, very lucky day for me. Me get cold and two pair of planes. Andy, what are you doing in bed with Aunt B? Excuse me, how do you do? I am Miss Piggy, and I am looking for my long lost lover, Kimmy. I am his pork princess. Hiya, Charlie. You're gonna be locked up here for 25 years. I'm getting out in 20. Yeah, what about it, Louie? Uh, could I have the upper bunk? Be a pilot. 
this and go for a flight. Take a salty dinner in your jet Yo, 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 and welcome to the Chrono Show. Um, this has been um, some time preparing this together. I know you guys saw the December 2nd, but we had rescheduled till the 9th. Um, so either way, this is um, Chrono's here, uh, our co-host with um, Ryan Drayson. What's up, dude? Hello, how's everybody doing? And our uh, special guest, um, Greg Berg. What's going on, man? Well, hi there. Glad to be here. And we're glad to have you here. I know it's been, um, uh, I think it's, I've been um, back and forth with you for a while and just kind of getting to know you and talking to you. And then finally the opportunity has come to get the chance to, um, you know, have you here, get to know you a little bit and learn more about, you know, you know, the past and now. So um, let's get right to it. Um, again, um, let's see, episode, this is episode, shoot, a 106, 106, and we started the show at the beginning of the pandemic, right when it started, I just started. I changed it from YouTubing, playing video games to a show, and it, this is how it turned out. And I actually love the way it's turned out. So it's good to chit chat and talk with great, interesting people, legendary people like Greg Berg. So let's get to it. So I got the big question for you, and take your time. Um, how did all this become voice acting. Where did it come from? How were what were you doing prior? Like, how did it begin for yourself? Well, that's a very uh, great opening question. <laughs> There's so much behind it. I'm uh, I moved from Ohio, where I was uh, a teenager, and moved to California to get into the entertainment business, one way or another. Whether it'll be TV, movies. Uh, commercials. I, I had a radio career going back in uh, Ohio for a while as a producer of celebrity talk shows. And after hearing everybody's story on these talk shows, gave me the idea to come uh, up uh, to Hollywood and do it on my own as well. And so I just took tips from things I heard from our interviews and uh, picked up and left to California. And Took whatever came my way at that point. One thing okay, led um, to my comedy character acting work, sure. uh, studying with like Second City and uh, uh, the Groundlings I studied with in their study workshop, uh, National Lampoon uh, comedy workshop I was in, and uh, studied with a, another guy named Harvey Lembeck, who was really big at the time. Uh, he was coaching people like Robin Williams and John Ritter. And I said, that's the kind of work I want to do. So I came to Hollywood, found out how to hook up with the workshops and took it from there. Sounds like a, it's a lot of work to get to, to it from step one. To, do you remember your first job, you know, voice acting? Do you remember which one? I, well, as far as professionally where I joined a union and, uh, could only do nothing but union work from that point. I was a voice on a radio theater, uh, kind of like a radio play, like they used to do in the uh, 40s and 50s. And uh, it was called Heartbeat Theater, and it was sponsored by the Salvation Army. And uh, they needed somebody to be a kid in a particular episode. And I remember Casey Kasem starting that way, being a kid in a, a TV or a radio show when he first started. So uh, they used me as the kid's voice. And from there, uh, things picked up. People heard about that I did voices. It was a young voice. And one thing led to another. That was the first professional voice called Heartbeat Theater. Did you ever have a moment where you were just like super nervous at all? Or you just kind of, it just came naturally? Well, the way I studied, uh, people uh, who were coaching me would say, just be yourself, be natural, don't uh, worry about things and, and get all that out of the way because that will uh, hurt your performance. So I learned back then early, luckily, uh, and I took good direction. So when, when I was told, just go out there, have fun and, and do what you're supposed to do. and uh, 
if, if you get it wrong or, or you shouldn't get it wrong, but if you do, there's always a way to redo it, except in maybe longer situations where there's a longer uh, uh, situation going on, a longer scene or something. You're going to see because you're, you're doing your work and uh, you're working with somebody else as well. And so they'll have to uh, recreate what they were doing. And uh, I, I guess the, the fright of not wanting to mess them up is, is what was involved. What's um, one of the, let's say you're out of all your voice acting, what is one of your favorite parts of voice acting? Something that maybe happens every time you're, you know, you're, you know, out of all the perks that you get, what's your favorite, let's say? Well, I, I guess it's whenever I'm able to do whatever I uh, originally wanted to do. If I had an idea of something, uh, who's to say, no, that's not what we want. And if it, is, it gets that far with the director or somebody who wrote it that was with me, uh, they would jump in and say, we want to be more jovial or, or whatever. But usually uh, at this point, after 40 years professionally doing this, I, I come up with pretty good choices. And if not, I'm open to uh, anybody's direction because it's their uh, original product. I was, um, I'm thinking out of all the experiences you've had, have you had like a particular like whether it's whether it's the Muppets or movies or shows or games you've done any of all those, let's say you wish you can go back to or one of your favorites? Well, I sure wish the, the Muppet Baby show had uh, run about seven or eight years, and I would have hoped that that would have continued on uh, for whatever reason, I guess, because Jim Henson died in uh, the middle or towards the end of the run of the show. Uh, that arm of creativity wasn't uh, involved in the show as much, and uh, or, or it kind of ended with his death, but uh, uh, for whatever reason, it lasted a good long time uh anything else like i, I was also part of a, a cartoon called avatar the last airbender mm -hmm. and uh i was just reading recently i i had a part of a character that died maybe after one show but reading about it in uh the internet it had mentioned they had hoped for that character to go on through the series so um Again, for whatever reason, they chose to end it or something occurred that the character ended. But um, you know, I'm, I'm in it for the long run. If they just need me for one show, uh, fine. But you, so you got a lot, of fun, yeah, a lot of fun memories with the uh, Muppet Babies. And so, um, Ryan, go ahead. You got, you got some questions? Take your time, man. Yeah. All right. Um, so my first one kind of jumps ahead to the present. Um, now, one of your credits is as Igor in Transformers Dark of the Moon. So that's a more recent release, um, and it's taking a beloved 1980s cartoon property and toy line property and um, updating it, modernizing it, and, and whatnot. Um, but it's also interesting to me, so like, it seems throughout um the like i remember growing up and kind of like voice actors were doing a lot of tv doing maybe radio commercials um it seemed like there was a lot more kind of strict um sort of things fit into a certain category and certain people did certain jobs and as we we're getting um this wave of nostalgia and projects being made out of things that we grew up loving you see more kind of mix of like you see now big movie stars doing commercials for like products on TV where you never would see that before. You see voice actors like, you know, people um, love certain characters in Transformers. You see voice actors that were typically people that were on TV get opportunities to do major motion pictures. Um, can you talk a little bit about your experience with like how accurate am I kind of picking up on, has there been sort of a transition in the way things work behind the scenes, the opportunities that people have or not? And uh, what has been your experience with that? And um, and just kind of your thoughts and feelings on that. 
Well, I, I was brought into Transformers on about the third uh, uh, film of that franchise with Michael Bay. Um, I read for it in December. They called me up in April to come in and do it. So uh, all, all that time, I, I might have just brushed it aside thinking they went with another actor or uh, might have been rewriting. But I, I didn't want to get too much too heady into it as to why I wasn't uh, called back for that particular character. I tried out like everybody else. And then I got word uh, that I would be brought in for the recording of the, the main project. But uh, as far as who they pick, it's up to um, either the producer, the director, maybe somebody uh, working on the show had a favorite person that they might have written the part for. But uh, at, at that point, to me, it was just a lucky shot where they liked what they heard and how I presented it. It was a short uh, character, but it was listed at the end of the credits uh, as one of the main characters in the show, at least. So uh, that's kind of how that came about. Um, I have no idea of the, the decision-making, but uh, I, I hope people uh, who don't know of my work at least give me a shot at it because uh, I do have more to myself than being a voice actor as uh, some people are known for in cartoons. I, I come from a uh, theatrical background uh, from TV film uh, uh, character acting. And I got into the voice acting because uh, at the time I was uh, prepared to do Saturday Night Live kind of uh, sketch work or, or character work like Laverne and Shirley and Morgan Mindy. And just when I was primed and ready to do silly characters like that the industry changed where the comedy shows that came out shortly after that became uh, more heady uh, more brain uh, uh, brainy uh, like uh, Murphy Brown or Cheers or something like that so uh, whatever the writers wrote that might have been from me was what drove the show uh, other than uh, the old Happy Days shows and even Carol Burnett and all that it was somebody coming up with a character to throw into the scene and uh, that's what made people laugh. So that's what I uh, had intended on doing is being one of those uh, utility characters that they say, oh, we need a guy to be the janitor. And I'd be like, oh, maybe a janitor like this and say, oh, can I help you today? And then uh, uh, if they say, okay, we want something, uh, a janitor in the next uh, week, then I could be like, okay, everybody, move out of here. Come on, let's go. I've got to clean this place. You know, so I did have the versatility from acting uh, to transfer it into uh, voice acting. And uh, some people didn't know that much of my background in, in comedy character work. Uh, so I used that talent into the voice side of things and if you notice most of my characters are family friendly uh kind of uh mm. you know huckleberry hound uh, young huckleberry mm. hound yeah Eyes there telling jokes and, and scooter just being you know the guy that's there working on his computer so these were all uh, uh solid characters but they weren't superheroes or uh, uh you know villains or things like that yet the more i grew into this business I can cover a villain here and there, but it won't be like, I'm going to rip your throat off and all that. I remember trying for a GI Joe years ago with the, the original animated GI Joe. And mm -hmm. uh, I had to read lines about, yeah, you know, like I'll get you, I'll tear your head off and all that. And the casting director at the time or the director had said, you sound too nice. <laughs> so <laughs> I kind of took it as, well, that's, me but uh I, I put that into some of the characters i do and uh they wind up being nice characters as well memorable characters so that's why you probably haven't seen me doing really mean stuff but as time goes on well i can get me <laughs> i don't know but uh sure, I've been to, to do that with my uh, character parts awesome so it's a uh, side note to that. Um, what have been some of your favorite live action roles that you've done? Live action roles? 
Yeah. Uh, well, I, where people had seen me here or there, I mean, I got to be silly in a couple of situations. One uh, back in the 80s, I was on a show called Silver Spoons and uh, I played a taxi driver and I was supposed to deliver a funny line about uh, taking uh, Ricky Schroeder's mother in the scene, uh, uh, delivering her to the house. And then I say just one line, but as it turned out, after rehearsal, they said they're going to give that line to the, the main actress who wanted to say the line because he got a laugh. So fortunately, the director uh, knew that I could do voiceovers, and he said later on in the show, there's going to be a radio situation where Rick Schroeder will be taking phone calls at a radio station. So since nobody will see me, I can be the voice at, uh, in the same episode as the, the one of the callers. So uh, that that was a fun uh, situation because you know still I loved Silver Spoons when I was growing up and I was so fortunate to get a part on there and I couldn't believe it and so then when I did it like I said I had a, a funny line to deliver but it went elsewhere <clears throat> and then there was a, a scene I did on Knots Landing where I was in person and uh, it was doing silly. Uh, something silly where somebody throws a package to me while I'm supposedly drinking coffee and I catch the package and drop the coffee all over my shirt. So again, a little silly uh, nonsense there and uh, uh, things like that are, are memorable for me because that's what I studied is how to be funny and, and uh, deliver. So, so it make people enjoy it. Um, other live actions. I mean, there've been, spots here and there but mostly i've been uh, involved with the voiceovers and but i'm still available to do live action and you know we don't have mel brooks around doing as many movies as he used to do but i felt like that's what i was geared for and uh, so i had to do something with my talents and i took it into uh, voiceovers awesome. sweet um so one of your big roles um earlier on i'm not sure uh just looking real quick at least earlier, earlier if not one of the earliest um on the teenage mutant ninja turtles oh. so doing donatello and bebop personally donatello is my favorite ninja turtle um i just always love that i gravitate to like the the smarter characters the characters that don't always kind of like they might be on fighting shows but they can also they also have kind of something more to them yeah um, he was always trying to find the way to come up with some way to get krang and, and shredder yeah 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 um so what can you tell us about kind of how you got into doing those like what the process was uh or um, you know, maybe the audition process is more or less the same as what you normally do, but kind of how did that come about? How did that opportunity come about? And when did you know kind of it was as big a deal as what it, it was, you know, at least very much back in uh, in the 80s when I was a kid growing up? Right. Well, when I heard of the show, it wasn't that I jumped on it and said I have to be on that. It was just a typical uh, audition when they needed what they needed. Uh, the way timing worked out, uh, Barry Gordon, who was the original voice and continued to be, uh, was uh, Donatello and Bebop. And uh, he happened to become the president of the Screen Actors Guild. And so that was during the time that they were recording the Ninja Turtles. So uh, they couldn't or didn't want to break the rhythm of uh, recording constantly. So as Barry got calls, uh, more important calls to go attend conventions, meetings or whatever, uh, they needed somebody to fill in for Barry at the time. And so I did what I basically do as a voice talent, uh, aside from just having my own voice, I was very uh, uh, capable of mimicking various uh, people if I heard them. I go back to imitating my relatives and teachers back in grade school. So I had that knack of hearing voices a certain way uh, musically and uh, timing wise. 
And uh, so I had the call to, if, if I could, you know, I don't know who else might have been up for it, but if I could sound like Barry Gordon. And so I, I basically did what I was hearing, and he was uh, more like this, and uh, I would get instructions to make him more like Woody Allen. And uh, so it would uh, turn like this, but I didn't want to really make people think Woody Allen was doing the turtle voice. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it uh, came through to where I was chosen as their uh, alternate voice there. Uh, later on down the line, it happened for some of the other turtles as well, but I, I wasn't approached to uh, or, or cared to try to cover all of them as uh, what they needed. So, yeah, they uh, uh, and, and oddly enough, uh, not many people knew, know this because it's behind the scenes. There were times where Barry Gordon had been part of a commercial uh, doing a character voice. And I was called just to see if I could match it. And they weren't going to change him or I, I would have consulted with him about, you know, they're, they're looking for replacing his voice. Uh, but in this case, since he legitimately had uh, no way to do the recordings I, I took over for that particular set of shows okay um real quick i'm gonna since we're talking about uh, ninja turtles um definitely one of my favorite uh, shows growing up well besides batman but turtles is always that you know that one that you know most most of us like i'm sure ryan as well but um mm -hmm. now with donatello and bebop and it's, it says also sluggo, but are you? How do you? Did, do you ever sometimes just kind of like remember? Let's say you remember in Ninja Turtles, and do you ever just try to revoice Donatello if you wanted to? Is it that easy, or is it hard to go back to? If 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 you were trying to do Donatello right now, would it be harder to do it now since back then? This, well, no, because uh, knowing Barry and uh, again being brought in for other projects he was part of. Uh, uh, apparently I have that same range uh, to, to pull it off. So I know what they were going for, but there are times when I might've done a voice for a project and I would have, between the time they call me back, uh, I might've uh, voiced a hundred other auditions or projects and uh, I'd need to hear it back. So sometimes I'm keen at hearing things. Just like uh, when I went to see Lord of the Rings, I was in the theater and uh, the, the, the character uh, that Andrew Serkis uh, was doing, Golub. Uh, oh, Golub, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, I was watching the movie and right away I started going, oh, my precious. Oh, what am I going to do with you? And I started doing it while I was the, in the theater. And they had people around me you know, double checking. <laughs> was that in the movie or was that somebody else? <laughs> but then since then, uh, it's been said how uh, many of the fans can imitate it more than the original character. But uh Things like that, I'd, I'd pick it up. That's that's a good knack I've had. And like I said, I, I've done that with relatives and teachers. And so when somebody told me, you know, if you go to Hollywood and did that, uh, you'd be paid for imitating other celebrities, which turned into a, another uh, portion of my job that uh, I, I have done in my career. It's a 40-year career. Uh, so many uh, sprinkled with so many uh, surprises and things doing toy voices doing uh, imitations of other talents and uh, I, I've made a living too doing voice replacements which is called ADR automatic uh, uh, voice replacement for uh, movies uh, automatic dialogue replacement um, I was the voice of John Travolta in Chains of Gold when uh, mm -hmm. he was on the telephone and something messed up with the microphone or they couldn't understand what he was saying. So they brought me in rather than call him in. Uh, I was a voice for Harvey Bell in a couple of movies. And uh, so things on the side of that, and that's why I love this business because it's always a challenge of something creative. And, uh, and then if I can't do the voice right off, I tell them I can't do it just to save the producers and the studios. Time and money. When I listen to mm -hmm. When when I listen to the um, the turtles and the bebop, it does the range is so so different. You know, you got Don Tello's got that you know the, the low key voice, but then bebop's got that more 
I don't know, grumpier, more. I don't know. It's just so crazy. I was like, how does he do that? Like from one to another. But did you? You well, did a lot of both. Well, take a listen to my uh, demo tape, uh, which I uh, used to be what people would listen to to say, can this person sound differently than any of their other characters? Now they don't really use demos as much, but uh, I have one in case people are casting or trying to get an idea of a type of character. But uh, otherwise, hopefully people know me from podcasts or from referrals from others when they need a voice and saying, uh, we need somebody in the mid to light voice uh, range because you, you won't get like a Stallone from me or uh, something common like an Arnold Schwarzenegger. But uh, over time, just a voice would come to me and I'd say, oh, I can sound like that person. But some of them are very obscure to where uh, um, unless somebody works with the original person and saying we're going to need somebody to sound like him for a project, uh, they don't know. But I tell them, ask me if I can do it, I can do it. Just like uh, one of my more current voices that I just play around with until they need it is, uh, uh, l l let's see if you can get it if I uh, imitate. You you're probably a little bit too young to get it, but uh, this is from a syndicated show that was going around. So I'll do a, a voice of a live action performer, see if you know who it is. All right, I'll give you three clues. First, think magic. Second, think silent partner. Third, oh. think. What is it, Ryan? Pen, pen from Pen and Teller. Yes, exactly. So that that's what? kind of how it is. <laughs> yeah. Hi, this is Pendulet, and you're going to watch magic. I don't know how he did the trick. I know it went up the sleeve, but how did you do it with short sleeves? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, you know, uh, and that kind of stuff happens with the uh, sound like for me. I mean, I've, I've, I've got a list of about 100 that I stopped listing of sound alikes in case uh, – I run into somebody in that department of a film where they say uh, we're going to need somebody who can sound like or somebody who can show up or was in the past. Another obscure voice that was uh, the guy, I, I can't, his name doesn't come to mind right away, uh, but he was the bald guy in Top Gun, played the chief uh, commander in there. And uh, he was in a different movie after that, and they needed me to cover his voice. So things like that. I mean, I, I have so much fun because I never know what I'm going to do each day. <laughs> I'll be, either be something animated or some uh, voice matching or just being myself doing uh, commercials or uh, voices on TV shows. So I would say, is there is there um, a hardest part about anything hard – or the hardest part about voice acting? I think in the beginning there is. Uh, and then as you go along, depends what technology does for you. Because now they can move a voice from one scene into another. So that uh, in the past, you might have worried about how they're going to do something if you messed up or uh, hopefully you didn't mess up. But uh, the more you practice at... Uh, the, the various aspects, you know what you can do and and willing to try other things. Uh, as long as you don't just tense up and uh, mess up, uh, it, it's out there for anybody to uh, lend their voice to whatever it is. Uh, you know, if you were called in, it, it must be something that they wanted. So uh, from there, it's just how it comes across to uh, the, the, the powers that be when they... Uh, Go to cast. That goes along with um, the other question I had was your advice for upcoming voice actors. What would you tell them if they wanted to seek your advice from you? Like they want to go sure, in, well, they want to learn. Well, sometimes when I do these uh, conventions, I uh, get to talk on panels and get to hear some of the questions people really are concerned with. Uh, hopefully, uh, for well. I, I, I really have an affinity for younger actors because they aren't spoiled by the business and the ups and downs just yet. So I, I tried to lend my uh, mentoring towards some of them. And I tried to tell them, 
if they can understand it, don't worry. <laughs> because so many actors, uh, young actors especially, that I've heard uh, went to auditions with upset stomachs and they are uh, uh, just couldn't sleep at night because they're wondering this and that. I said, just don't worry. Go and do what you do. And then uh, uh, if they like you, you'll get the call back. But make sure you're professional about it. Uh, for the uh, upcoming voice actors, uh, you're, you're again. It's called voice acting, so learn how to act, and then uh, apply your voice to it. And if you go in that direction, or you start in the direction that I started with, is uh, actually um, uh, doing the on-camera training. Uh, it all came together at the uh, end of it when I started booking a lot more. Uh, because even as a kid, I was doing silly voices. I've heard people tell me that at conventions that they start doing silly voices. What do they do then? Well, if they want to pursue voice acting, then yes, uh, study acting, and then uh, you get to read your scripts and uh, you can then do with the voice then. But that, that's the start. Uh, learn to act first. <laughs> Okay, so, so uh, Ryan, now uh, do you um, got uh, got more questions before I move move on? Yeah, yeah. Um, so on your uh, Wikipedia page, where it lists out uh, the work that you've done, um, I noticed that in addition to television and film roles, that you uh, dabbled in some voice work for anime and video games. Now. Those are both things that we on the show, uh, certainly I love, um, but I believe generally that's kind of, th those are certainly the video games is something that everyone that comes on to, to co-host on the show loves. The anime is also something that's pretty consistent across all of our co-hosts. Um, so how did the, we'll start with how did the opportunities come up to get in, to diverge into uh, those fields, and there's a couple specific projects I want to talk about that you worked on. Well, I haven't done much anime, but I did uh, when it more or less started doing a show called Flint the Time Detective. And even when I do conventions, what even brings it up? So it was probably early anime, maybe in the 80s, I believe, that was going on. But so I, a lot of my attention was uh, geared towards uh, well-known TV shows and cartoons. And because uh, I don't even think I done a cable series. Uh, when cable started, I thought uh, uh, I was being set out more for uh, mainstream shows. But I was always available. But uh, again, uh, now a lot of those shows that were on cable are turning out to be highly popular at the convention, but no. Oh, let's try to get him back on. Let me, looks like he, let me, give me one second. Connection dropped. Yeah, he dropped. There he is. Looks like he's York. I'm texting him right now. anyone watching please bear with us just a few technical difficulties with our uh, guest connecting his connection with the show i'm going to reset the, the link again because this yeah. one doesn't i think you might be able to hear us but it says device not connected let me oh, oh there he is there he is there he is there we go yep back. yeah it looks like it just kind of i was texting you all right what, yeah where was i uh where we dropped <laughs> You're starting to talk to us about how you said, um, as I noted on your Wikipedia page, you hadn't done much in anime, but you're starting to talk about how you um, got the opportunity right. to do that. Right. Uh, so I, I did get to be part of Flint the Time Detective back then. And uh, then other anime started coming into the picture for other uh, shows, but I was busy <clears throat> being sent to more uh, mainstream shows. Uh, <clears throat> can't remember being on any cable shows at the time either. That was something new, uh, just like anime was at the time. Uh, so I wound up uh, just reading for whatever the agencies uh, sent me on for what I would fit. I mean, again, 
getting back to evil characters, uh, you've got that or the, the superheroes in the uh, uh, video games. And my voice isn't uh, really constructed for doing the yells and shouts like that. But uh, mm. if they have some nice character in there, yes, they uh, submit me and uh, then I get to read for them. So in, in one case, I, I remember a good workout was uh, with uh, uh, one video game I did like 22 voices in at the time. And uh, EverQuest was the one. And I think they brought okay. me back for the as well. <clears throat> yeah, I, I did get to play with some video games. But again, uh, it just depends who's casting and what they are looking for. Uh, because there are these guys that are almost in every video game doing the shouting and screaming voices. And uh, if they need somebody like myself, you know, they can play wizards and things like that. Hmm. Uh, you know, he did like 18 great. voices, right? Uh, in EverQuest, the first one I thought 22. And then uh, the, the, the thing is, yes, I could cover that many voices. The, the funny part was, they say, okay, now do that voice, but he's English or he's got a Scottish accent or something like that. So it turned into a whole other character for me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I went with it, but they used it. And uh, there are a few video games out there. I, I don't know if the ones uh, currently now, but you know, I go to the conventions as well to see some of the people who were in them. And uh, they, were, they were chosen for whatever they did. But uh, I'm available. <laughs> Yeah, let's get into them real quick. Um, favorite things about cons, um, expos, conventions. What are your favorite things going to them? You know, how's well, I jumped in uh, when one uh, appearance manager started. He had 10 clients, now he has over 300, I believe. And so I got to see that develop uh, the interest in cons. At first, some people said, oh, you're going to do a con. Why do you want to just go and see 20 people and uh, spend your day just seeing 20 people? And now it's grown to lines of uh, people uh, and seeing their favorite portrayers of characters or uh, the, the uh, cosplay people that show up. Uh, so... Uh, as far as the cons, I love them because I get to meet some of the people that constantly tell me that they grew up watching me and when their parents were having arguments or something in the background, they were laser fixed on the show I was on and they thank me for that. It really touches my heart when I hear that kind of thing. And then I've run into people that said, uh, yeah, I just get to hear all these great stories. One guy said because of the Fozzie Bear character, he became a comedian. So I, I love hearing that kind of thing because, well, I go back to talk radio once again to where I uh, enjoy just hearing people talk. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I do do the cons. I have a, a, a con apparently coming up in May that we just signed for. Uh, so the more I know about it, I will be out there promoting it. But, uh, yeah, I do get the calls uh, and I, I get them through the appearance manager and, uh, Anybody else that would like to invite me to one because they feel that I would fit uh, can contact me through my email or else through my representatives, which is a company called Celeb Works, and that's uh, C E L E B W O R X. Now, uh, I noticed too uh, a lot of the cons are more or less with the superheroes and, and action figures. So I more or less fit into the family fun, cute and cuddly character uh, <laughs> division. And they don't really have that many cons or many appearances of people at the, the heavy duty cons like that, for comic books and things. But we did have some Muppet Baby comic books. We, uh, uh, years ago, I was uh, an obscure character called Robot Man for Robot Man and Friends with mm. the Deke Productions when that first started. That was based on a comic strip. Uh, so it just depends where you are in the field of animation and comics. Uh, I've been around. Um, yeah, that, I definitely want to um, talk to the um, talk to the guy at the Midwest Gaming Classic and see if we can hopefully, um, you know, get they can talk to um, 
the guys at uh, Celeb Works and get you in because I would like to have the opportunity to, you know, because people I'm sure would love to see you and, you know, I would like mm -hmm. to meet you and be kind of cool. So I'll definitely know who to talk to and they'll communicate with you. So it'll be awesome. There's so many more opening up these days because, uh, you know, prior to COVID, uh, I was doing a few of them. I uh, even went as far as going to England and that was only because of a one connection that uh, the people had. But uh, I haven't done uh, Europe yet. And I know uh, maybe other uh, connections have better uh, contacts at those venues as well. Because I, I did do uh, uh, something that was really popular in Ireland uh, called Gnomes and Trolls, which was a, a animated. First it came out on film, then it came out on VHS and uh, went to DVD, I believe. But that's a big thing in Ireland, uh, gnome, anything to do with gnomes or trolls. And yet we haven't done any kind of uh, reach out to that area. It, 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 I forget how many countries it was uh, very popular in. Uh, also within it uh, was Roger Moore, Sir Roger Moore. Yeah. And, uh, so for people yeah. who were in his that collected his memorabilia, uh, I was part of that. What I want to do is take a moment to um, – you You said you were a big fan of something. I'm going to play a little quick clip, and I want you to tell me about the clip, and uh, I'm going to play it right now. It's about 50 seconds. Check it out. Every great comedian has to know how to make a whipped cream pie in case he should ever get into a pie fight. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> hey, you can't do that to me. It's so funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Take> that. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> tell us about it. <laughs> oh, it's a dream come true with that. Uh, big fan of the Three Stooges. Uh, I used to write letters to Larry even when I was growing up, and uh, he answered them. And uh, uh, then here I am in this cartoon. Well, actually, uh, if he was part of it that day, uh, one of the nephews of Mo Howard, uh, Jeffrey Scott, who wrote for the show occasionally. Uh, may have put that part in where somebody had heard that I was a big Stooges fan and uh, got me right in the middle of the fight. And now when I watch the Stooges, I'm going to go, I threw that pie at her. <laughs> I threw that pie at him. And uh, people wouldn't know what I'm talking about, but it's really, yeah, it was me. <laughs> like, I remember was, seeing that. Oh, my Lord. So those years ago, I remember like when I saw it again the other day, it's like, I've seen this before. I grew up with this, you know, seeing all this and Muppet Babies. And it's just like, it just hits you and it hits you right at home because you're, as a child, I was growing up. It's like being raised by good, wholesome cartoons, funny stuff. You know, you know, you realize what, what you've done, you know, Greg, to bring a lot to, to, to us with your voice acting and things like that. So it's definitely a good thing and very touching, you know, to know that's, I was like, I had to ask. I had to ask you. You did this and did it. It's, it's amazing. It's funny. And now that, yeah, now that is one of the things I remember. I mean, there's a few, because uh, sometimes uh, you'll talk to character actors who say, oh, I don't remember when that happened, but uh, other people remember that exactly what they saw. Uh, just like uh, we did something about Star Wars as well. And uh, uh, they, they drew us into some scenes, things like this. But it the, the show itself won four daytime Emmys in a row, four years in a row, out of the time that they were nominated. And uh, uh, it tells you right there, it was a great show. It's just uh, something happened along the way to have it rerunning. I know, I guess you got that clip and other clips may be on uh, YouTube at this point, but I sure do hope uh, there's a fan base or somebody with... Uh, a uh, great mind at the studio to say, you know something, that was a great show. Let's uh, put it back out there uh, as far as uh, reruns. Uh, I was thinking of, um, 
I was thinking of grabbing that scene, that that scene too, and a little bit of our conversation leading up to that scene, then playing that scene, just kind of do a separate video based on that moment and get a more clear, you know, copy of that scene. So I want to kind of put together a, a video this weekend and just kind of like, yes, yeah, what I do, I tag your name on there and you know the that you know what you did and a little bit of the story is going to be within that that clip. So I'll do that and I'll send you a. A link so you can see that and you can always click into that and people that would always that might look you up are going to find that so it's going to be cool i, I well, like to great, do those kind of things it's great getting to do this podcast with you because some people uh, may have known the name or they couldn't place all the characters but there are so much more that, uh, with characters that i have to offer and i look forward to anybody who loves a good cartoon or even has a, a small short that they want to voice for and think of me because I love being part of anything creative that's uh, worthwhile. Like that. So it's definitely on, um, in the description to have like um, just more, you know, your information and things like that, you know, more of your history. So that, or even on the tags, when I tagged, I tagged as much as I can besides if it's like, let's say they're searching Muppet Babies. They see Muppet Baby, they search it, they're going to find this video along, this podcast along that category, or Transformers, Dark Fate, or oh, and Ninja Turtles, Donatello. So that's all, like, tagged there. So hopefully that will help in the yeah, way they, of connecting. And, and just looking at that uh, group itself, I mean, that was 30 years ago. Can you think of any other cartoons these days, a uh, series maybe that uh, is just as educational or... Uh, fun to just sit down and watch like that. Uh, I, I love Warner Brothers, and sometimes they stretch the line with uh, trying to make a, 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 a joke along, elongated uh, and, and go places like that. But uh, there are cute, quick jokes throughout uh, some of those cartoons. But, uh, I mean, look look what you got. Uh, and I was very happy to be part of I mean, working Jim Henson, and working with Michael Bay, working... I've done a, a serious uh, role with uh, Oliver Stone project. So I, I've worked with some of the best, and I'm looking for that next best person to, or just anybody who wants to have uh, somebody of quality uh, in, in their project. Definitely. It's uh, exciting to know what, what's in the future. So um, before I get to that particular question, I wanted to ask you about um, – Who's the boss and married with children? Your experiences with those two? Oh yeah, uh, who's the boss was a great experience. Again, another show that I grew up watching, and saying, "Oh, what the heck! If I, I can ever be on that show, uh, the powers that be make it happen." Well, one at one point, I ran into Tony Danza, and he was doing an appearance, and I was in uh, the same group that he was supposed to appear with uh, uh, just as a charity. And I went up before he went on, and among things I did, a little uh, stand-up routine. I'm not a stand-up comic, <laughs> a long shot, but I did uh, uh, comedy bits with some of the voices I do, which I might do at a panel here and there. And I started to do Andy Kaufman, and I said I am pleased to be here. Uh, somebody please tell me where I'm at. <laughs> and uh, uh, so after I finished doing the, the routine, Tony uh, came up to me after he went on. Uh, I hung around and he came up to me and just said, I'm so glad that you went and did that because nobody knew who I was. <laughs> and I said, uh, well, it was just part of something that I figured you were here. So I, I knew who you were. So I did Latka and then he came up and did, uh, he was just himself. And uh, so we got to talking. I told him what I did. I do voices. And he says, if something came up, he'd uh, recommend me. And he recommended me for that particular Who's the Boss episode that I got to record. And it was the Christmas episode. And I was the voice of a talking robot, which I've done in other shows as well. So uh, the robotic uh, uh, character study uh, was, was nothing to me. But uh, at the very end of the Christmas episode, uh, this particular Christmas episode, I was the robot that said, God bless us, everyone. <laughs> and then <laughs> the, the show faded to black or whatever. And uh, so, yeah, I was uh, heard on that. Married with children. 
that, that's an interesting story for people who are into uh, live television. I was originally called in to be a voice at the beginning of Married with Children through the theme. Uh, what happened was Ed uh, O'Neill was on the couch with the family or just by himself changing channels on a television, which they kept in. Every time he changed a channel, it would be myself and another actress, and we would you would hear us saying, oh, I love you, honey. I love you too, honey. And then he, he'd change the channel because he was upset hearing that. And then he'd get to the next channel, and the next channel would be like, honey, I'm home. It's good to see you. Oh, you're so sweet. And so it, every time he changed a channel with something uh, uh, to do with love and loving each other and a happy family. And then it goes into the show for some way or another. Well, uh, when the show finally said, yes, it's coming out, then uh, – uh, I watched it, and all they did was play Love and Marriage at the beginning. And he's still changing channels and all that, or doing something with the remote. So uh, all this time, you might have heard me or the other actress uh, uh, if they didn't change the theme to the, that show. But that's what we did. And later on, they did bring me back to do other uh, character voices if he's watching TV somewhere else. So... Uh, there were a couple episodes I was part of, uh, aside from the. That's pretty know, cool. The scrapped uh, title show, uh, promo. Ryan, did you have um, a question you want to shoot out? Uh, the only things I wanted to go over were there's a couple specific projects I wanted to quickly ask about. So, if there's anything else you want to cover first. Um, no, um, no, go ahead, Ryan. You can handle that, and then we'll go towards uh, I'll have the closing questions and all that. So, okay, okay. So, the ones I specifically want to watch, want to ask about, um, they are both, um, where you're credited as additional voices. One I have watched, uh, the other one is a game project I have not yet played. I do own a copy, I haven't played it yet. Um, and I'm hoping you can kind of shed light on, um, what your parts are, like where we would find you in um, those projects, um, because in the one case, I'll I'll try and recall what the scene was, and the other, I'll certainly keep a an ear out for when I'm playing through that. Um, so the first one, um, it says you did additional voices in the Cat Returns, which is an anime uh, movie. Yes. Uh, like I say, sometimes I never know what I'm going to be called in for. So when they said the, they had the project Cat Returns, said, what, what's this? They said, well, we'll be putting in uh, clearer voices uh, of different characters. So, again, that was one of those projects where uh, somebody wasn't heard well or uh, voice was the same tone as one of the other characters. So they needed to diversify the sound. So people put in the scenes. So yeah, they uh, brought me in. Said, "Okay, you're going to be this voice." Is that the one with Montresor? Uh, was one of the voices? Character, uh, uh, I was also I, the name doesn't ring a bell. I know Anne Hathaway does the main character hmm. uh, in it, and there's a cat character called the Baron. Is another main oh. character in it. Yeah, because um, I, I have no idea which characters I were uh, doing in those. But I do know they called me in to say that's why they needed uh, somebody to be this voice or that voice. And uh, I said, at this point, I've uh, been through so much of uh, uh, voice work that uh, if you need a voice, that's what I do. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, that's what they needed that for. And, and sometimes they won't even say what the characters are. Like you said, it says additional voices. That's up to the movie company itself, whether they're going to list right. everything. I think they only are required to list the first 100 actors they want to put in there. And then if they want, like Toy Story, I was uh, the original Toy Story, and they had my name as an additional voice as well. Oh, and then, yep, uh, saw that. Yeah. And then the other one was... Um, so the game uh, that I haven't... I haven't gotten to yet. I do own a copy. Is um, Lightning Re Lightning Returns Final Fantasy Thirteen? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember going in for that one, uh, reading a particular character, and uh, uh, it was just more or less here's your character going and, and 
uh, say these lines. So I wasn't following any of the uh, uh, series of it, but uh, I, I was just brought in for that one in particular because sometimes yeah. there is another one. And I'd say, why wasn't I on that one? They said, we didn't know you did that. And that happened with uh, something on the Simpsons too. I, I was the voice on the Simpsons uh, credited as a guest uh, star for one of the early episodes, which you played in the introduction of some of my work. And I was the announcer saying, it's time for a hooray for everything after Thanksgiving yeah. uh, thing. And, and they play that so many times because it was one of their first Thanksgiving. I think it was episodes. called Bart versus Thanksgiving. That's yeah. what it was. And I was two other characters in there as well. But oh. then I had happened to just catch a Simpsons episode maybe three years or four years later. And I hear an announcer saying, and now our uh, uh, hooray for everything halftime show. And then I said, why wasn't I doing that? And I'm thinking it was one of those things where they, they forgot who even did it or uh, mm. they, actually it was Harry Shearer doing it. So he, they had him anyway as a voice talent. But mm. sometimes that happened because uh, with Toy Story, I was in Toy Story 1, but not the sequels afterwards. And it, I was the voice of the uh, electronic doors at the Pizza Planet. And I would say, wow. well, it's a planet. And they've used that in other episodes or the cartoons as well. And well, again, uh, since they didn't say Greg was the voice of the doors, they probably just said, well, we need voice to match that. And they've got somebody else. Yeah. I don't know what the story is. But I do hear that from time to time. Somebody might say, uh, I still hey, remember that. <laughs> that was oh, I, that, I had that guy on the podcast. <laughs> That is awesome. It's just yeah. good to know those little stories that you don't know. They mess what he said. <laughs> Welcome to Pig's Planet. That's, that's crazy. But it's really awesome. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm a voice actor that's tucked away. I mean, yeah, I could use some more publicity, I'm sure. But uh, uh, some people, the, the names and faces are changing now in the casting. And so as more people are becoming casting people, maybe somebody can say something to them and say, hey, I just saw this guy who did this and that. Because I'm not doing the social media like uh, some people do one every day or something like that. Uh, I'm busy trying to get my next uh, uh, projects together. Which so someone's going to find you <laughs> in the future. Someone's going to look for you. Let's say they see, they see this video. Are they going to locate... Um, you through Messenger, Facebook, or how do they find you? No, I'm on. Uh, I've got my email still, which is I do voices at yahoo.com. Some people are still saying, How'd you get that over here? I said, No, I go way back with that uh, because I know people have not heard their selling website, but this is the email for me I do voices at yahoo.com. If you have a project or interested in something, because uh, yeah, if you don't have a project but you have an idea and saying, you know, when I get this project together, do you think I can call on you? I, I'm doing it at the time. Um, you know, I'm I'm available. Uh, I'm not hiding here, so uh, I'm looking else to that next project and happy to be part of, uh, like I say, the creative process. I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna um, make sure I add the email on there. So if, uh, that's one thing I have to update right after this is update the fact to reach out to you. <laughs> is that yeah? I do voice. You know, I do voices. Yeah, Yahoo.com in order to locate you for you know, you know, kind of say for business or you right. Because if they're then gonna try to uh, yeah, if they're gonna try to arrange something for a project they're doing, then I can refer them to the people who represent me because you always need one of them to go over the contract parts but mm -hmm. uh, I'm, not, I'm not doing uh, I, I do side projects here and there but uh, uh, again it's a matter of them knowing that uh, I'm available and what I can do and uh, because I've been on projects I, I bring that up because I've been on projects where people would say oh I thought you were just this uh, funny guy on TV that you, you, you characters on TV and then I do my silly voices or whatever they need or say like, uh, hey, do you need a Gilbert Gottfried voice? And then they uh, say, we oh, didn't know you could do that. And I said, no, I do a hundred <laughs> voices like that. 
but I'm not, you know, knocking on doors. Oh, open the door. I do Gilbert, you know, like some people may. So I know it's just me coming from that Midwest uh, background. <laughs> I'm not a pushy New Yorker uh, type, and I'm not a laid back California either. But uh, I, I just like meeting creative people and uh, playing. <laughs> What is um? What's next for you? Do you have anything upcoming at the moment, or just still, you know? I do, but I can't talk about it yet because I signed a, a an agreement where we can't disclose it until the project actually comes out, and it's due out uh, next year. The uh, uh, well, it's a live uh, action project, but I'm a voice in the project itself in a couple of episodes. They, I think they did. Mm. It few episodes but uh, i did a couple of them that's cool it's good it's good to know but you know you know it's okay we respect uh we, you know we'll find out later you know when the time comes and then, you know I'm, I, things are shaping up too with that uh, other convention i uh, signed to uh, be part of in april which uh, will be taking place in nebraska so i can at least be general about that <laughs> what, I, what time what time are, around what time in april uh, spring, uh, is, uh, a little after when spring starts. Uh, that's why I say until um, they're sure about it, I'm I'm locked into it. But if they change anything, we still have a lot of time before that. But for those watching in the Midwest, uh, there's a chance you might be able to come out that way. And as I know more about it, I'm, I'm going to put something up on my Facebook, which is Greg Bird. I'm definitely going to be talking to, you know, talk to that guy tonight, you know, just kind of, you know, let him know, hey, check this guy out, you know, give him the opportunity. I'm, I, you know, because they're always looking for new faces, new celebrities, new, you know, you know, like every year, it's like, I know they, this would be a great opportunity for both sides, you know, for him, for you. So well, I you definitely want to me work on my, that. Uh, it could be me just signing or it could be me talking about the voice business or just me being silly and, uh, uh, interacting <laughs> whatever i'll be there to film too i do a lot of filming so i'll be there to do a That's i'll great. film the whole thing <laughs> and uh give you the the videos after um real quick i wanted to go over this real fast we're heading towards the end <clears throat> so in order for people to get um autographs or so like i see they contact you uh through email again right so Right, it, just because if they have questions, what they need, uh, and make sure so they don't just send out a request. Uh, I will take autograph requests at I do voices at yahoo.com. Uh, that's my email just to write to say, where can I send uh, something to you? Uh, because I've autographed uh, various items and, and photos and training uh, cards, and cards, yeah, collector cards, but some bigger items. But they have to remember that they have to put in uh, uh, a carton or whatever it is that will uh, have be uh, that it would have the mail uh, return mail. Uh, Even um, you mentioned script copies too. That sounds pretty amazing. Like script copies of episodes of Muppet Baby. That's something that uh, some people are really surprised at because I was surprised I I remembered I had it uh, from. Many of the shows that I've worked on, I kept scripts of what we did uh, for, I, I don't know, just for memory. But I found out I kept some of the Ninja Turtles scripts of the few episodes I've worked on, about five or six episodes. So I thought, why not make copies of them and sign them? And the real diehard Turtle fans could then have a copy of the script if they're up and coming animation writers or just fans of the show, they could compare watching the show and reading the script along with it. They could see lines that were dropped or lines that were added or how people played around with uh, the project. And and so those, yeah, those uh, with me signing the script itself, uh, you know, there's a price for that. And uh, that's with the Ninja Turtles. Then I found out I had tons of Muppet Baby scripts, <laughs> which... Uh, you, I, I've met Muppet fans at the conventions, and they tell me how my, how they have parts from some of the Muppets or uh, uh, autographs of the original Muppet players and all that. And I said, but do you have a script from the original Muppet Baby animated show? And they said, well, that's one thing I never saw, like, because there's like eight of us then. 
had them, and I don't know how many kept them. So I kept uh, my copies of various episodes, and I signed those as well. Uh, however, uh, the bonus is I also got Katie Lee, who was Ralph the dog, and Laurie O'Brien, who was Miss Piggy. And uh, they've signed, I, I have five copies left. Of wow. Five scripts that they've signed. So if somebody wanted a, a, a you know, big collector of those, uh, they can uh, arrange with me. Yeah, to to get that, but uh, I, I wouldn't say and send money through the mail. I'd say contact me first, and I'll give you the address where to uh, write with your uh, posted paid. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, um, because I do get people sending pop that they want to sign as well. Huckleberry Hound, I think, has a pop pop up. Real quick, um, someone had asked. Um, I feel like uh, I should know who Greg Berg is. Who is Greg Berg? So someone's asked the question. So to answer that real quick, Greg Berg has done a lot of voices through through the many years. Um, Fozzie, Bear, and uh, Scooter from Up Babies, Ninja Turtles, Donatello, uh, Bebop, and then a lot of other famous, you know, from games, Final Fantasy, to the list goes long, uh, even in Transformers. Um was it Dark of the Moon? A lot of voices he's done and, you know, so much work that, you know, if you catch the episode from the beginning, you'll learn more about about who Greg Berg is. But he's an amazing um, voice actor and he does acting too as well. So check him out, you know, and watch the episode to get the chance or look him up too on uh, Wikipedia. So it's uh, either way, it's, it's, uh, he's an amazing guy. It was, it was great to have the opportunity to have um, – I've been wanting this – for for a while and i know you you know difficulties and stuff like that with um you know how do you say um you know with the our you know we were talking phones things like that we finally got this working and well that's good <laughs> okay. I mean, cause, uh, yeah it, it gave me the opportunity to just talk about what i've done uh which uh i, I enjoy more hearing about other people as well and uh, uh watching them create because if I did it, I mean, you guys got to be able to do it too. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm eventually hoping to turn that into a venue where I would uh, give, uh, which which I'm, I don't have a representative to, to uh, handle that much for me, but I will be going, uh, making rounds to groups and uh, panels if they have me to speak about uh, uh, positivity and, uh, how to go for your goals based on what I did. So I'm not there to talk about it. And I, I do this and then I do that. I'm here to say I did this, but I want you to be able to go and do uh, what you want to do as well. Because if I did it, I'll give you my blueprint. And then uh, I, I guarantee you should be able to uh, uh, follow your dreams and do whatever it is you want to do, whether it's being voices or, like I said, that other band that became a comic because the watching something I did. But that, that's me in, inside of me, which I like sharing with loads of people. And and I haven't expanded that yet, but that's part of what's coming up. Also, um, <laughs> let's see, before we wrap up, um, uh, um, Ryan, did you have any last questions before we head out? No, I'm good. We covered all the, the stuff that I want to talk about. I really appreciated your time and are you answering my questions? Thank you. And by was... any chance, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was saying I'm glad I was able to uh, because I, I've been on a number of podcasts and it just depends what they want to talk about, my history or the history of you know what what I was part of. So uh, yeah, I look forward to. I mean, with that address I gave you, the email. Also, if there's groups that are looking to have people as guest speakers to talk about. But basically, what I would talk about is uh, how to set a goal, and uh, it's easier than you think. And uh, it involves me telling what I did to get to where I'm at. And then from there, I say, now, you do what you do, and this is how to, to follow these steps, and you'll be doing what you want to do as well. Cool. Um, if I ask you a quick question, and would you be able to – Say a line, or do you have to hear it first with Donatello right now? Could you do it, or, or would you? 
from well, the that, that's not about the, it's almost like you know like with uh Huckleberry Hound, they'd say, say something Huck would say, and basically it's his uh, signature, oh, my darling, oh, my darling. Uh, uh, you know, so everybody knows him for that, or, or Posse Bear going, waka, waka, waka. <laughs> but for Donatello, I don't think he had an actual line. It was more or less like I, I did earlier with, uh, you know, hey, we've got to catch Shredder out of, uh, you know, or, or we've got to get, uh, you know, bebop and, uh, uh, rock steady or something so it's always he, he's calculating how to catch them in each show or uh say maybe if we do this we can you know and so and like you said he was a smart guy so yeah he was always calculating something uh but i i never really knew that donatello had a particular line and that yes yeah, that de definitely been one of the favorite characters you know uh, um ryan said it was his favorite character that's yeah. my favorite character that's our favorite character. yeah it's awesome just kind of like yeah. just to yeah, admire what we i mean even if i did the interview the whole thing like this it would be the donatello voice and talking to you like this and saying hey you know we've got to come up with some, some way to catch the mutagen man what there's a mutagen monster oh no <laughs> so, but then uh, Bebop is a uh, get titles, and he's yet yeah, the rough one, but he's kind of dumb too. Oh, that's so that's just awesome. Just awesome. it's uh, between the two. Uh, did did I the question was I was what hearing your voice over video? Did you also play around and did Miss Piggy, or is that just something that was added on the clip? Uh, that was my imitation when I uh, yeah. first put out one of my very first uh, demo reels of. Hey, I can sound like different people. I mean, uh, uh, it's something that I never did for for that uh, venue, but it's a voice I can do. And plus, people perked up from it because they said it isn't just somebody trying to sound like Miss Piggy, really. And then, as it turned out, Frank Oz was the voice of Miss Piggy, and Frank Oz also did Fozzy. So I guess that stamped me being in that range to cover this kind of voices because just like in the, the video game for monsters inc I, I replaced his character fungus uh in yep. the video games and mm -hmm. again they came to me he said you know, well <laughs> you're you're doing fozzy bear who was frank and uh, fungus was frank so uh mm. just did what i did and that's how it works sometimes so then would so, you yeah, be able I, to... I love doing this it's because it's so creative. You know, I never know what they're going to ask for. It's like, what, yeah. what would it sound like if this... Did, and, and just like uh, some of my colleagues, so the great Frank Welker, uh, everybody would uh, go off talking about him saying, oh, he made it sound like he was like a 50-foot ape who was playing tennis and whatever. <laughs> and so with me, I'm open to the same suggestions you know, because of that comedy background as well, uh, doing improv and and sketches and all that they say okay here you're gonna do this and i'd say okay <laughs> and i'd give it what i would uh, imagine it to be because I, I do have an extensive background in improv and uh, sketch work where uh, you tell me do this and i'll show you what i do yeah some people can't do right. that I, hear. Yeah. I know somebody in animation that said you know, i'd say hey uh, did you ever do the dialogue replacement or or the the background voices in projects i was in the movie concussion and i did uh, uh background voices for that uh that they needed crowd crowd scenes and people to be talking in a crowd but not really understanding them and i asked somebody else i know in animation if they do that as well because i thought everybody did and they said oh no i, I, don't, I don't like doing that I, it's hard for me to match up and all that kind of thing so you know I, I just do what I do, and they do what they do, and hopefully we all get to work together. Ryan, did you have a quick, quick question that you wanted to? Oh, just when Greg was talking about uh, doing a lot of Frank Oz voices, I was like, oh, so um, it makes me wonder then, like, how you would do with with uh, Yoda is another one of his really popular, famous. Uh, Job yeah, well, that kind of reminds me, like I mentioned, the Lord of the Rings character. Uh, when Yoda came out, then, you know, maybe at the beginning, I could do Yoda, you know, all that. But then you've got the diehard Star Wars fans that, like, uh, dream and sleep uh, talking like Yoda. And uh, people have been cast 
uh, doing that for the franchises. And uh, I, I was might have been approached, but again, some people were so much into it at the time for yeah. what they needed, they got the part. Because, um, yeah, there are sometimes I watch a, a show and I say, wait, I could be the voice of that as well. But uh, it just depends if it comes by my way or somebody who yeah. me for that. Just like when, when I first started, people used to think I sounded like a young Casey Kasem. And uh, by slightly uh, uh, pushing the voice, I would do Casey Kasem talking like this and saying, hi, this is Casey Kasem, and, and I'm on your show now. Uh, and and you'd say it was Casey. I even met his daughter who just said, that's my dad. You know? Yet, out of all these years, I've never been called to the be the voice of Casey Kasem for anything. Mm. And there's like four or five people that have been and people know them for that. But uh, not that, you know, otherwise I, you would think, oh yeah, that's the guy who always does Casey. So we'll call him <laughs> every time we need Casey. But uh, luckily I had a diverse career of high and low voices and animals and sounds and things like that. Hey, um, like animal sounds, um, I was in a, a movie well, when I mentioned animal sounds, I even did animal sounds for a, a movie where it was supposed to be this alligator in a, a horror movie that uh, the three kids came to a zoo or, or some cage area, and this alligator, monster alligator, is there. And I was one of the voices. They mixed three of our voices together. But yeah, I do things like that too. Hmm. Um, let's, uh, I want to say what's up to, um, I think. DJ Game Studio is going on, dude. Let's see. Hey, say, hey, fellas. I think I put it right here. I think I can catch this. Let's see, get the next one. He used to watch Muppet Babies every Saturday morning. So cool. Hey, DJ Game Studios, do you have any questions? Because we're we're at that uh, end point of the uh, the podcast. Oh, looks like uh, it happened again. We'll let Greg I jump right back in. in. But if you got a question, we can um, he, he'll get right back on it. It's doing that thing again. So question okay. while we're catch up oh, there. Oh, there he is. He's popping back up. Give him and, a second. Uh, hello to Zach Carmen Sismic and again to We've been on for like an hour and twenty two minutes. Pretty cool. Good timing. Um but again, yeah. if you have any questions, we're gonna head out soon. Give it a few mm -hmm. moments. We'll let Greg uh, get back right in and we will go towards our closing of the uh, podcast. Yeah. Where's the link? <laughs> there he is. There. Are we back? <laughs> you got half of you back. Yeah, right. Let's see, uh, but he's not moving. Yeah, I mean, most of us stood. Um, I, I remember waking up on Saturday morning yeah, myself and just catching uh, up babies or whether it's other, you know, Ninja Turtles and etc. So, uh, good good old days. Up babies yeah, are not, or how you say, Saturday morning cartoons are not the thing these days. Can you hear? Can you hear us, Greg? Can you hear us, Greg? Can you see us? I think so now. Yeah. We can hear you. Let me see how yeah, this is. Yeah, I, I see me. <laughs> can Can you hear us? Oh uh, yeah, there you are. Okay, yeah, I got it. Part of Ryan, but he's frozen. I'm frozen. R Ryan, are you frozen, or are you just sit? You're still <laughs> here. Well, I'll do some weird Good. hand things. Moving I'm moving. Am I moving? Oh, real quick. Uh, yeah. DJ Game Studio has a quick question. If we can get this uh, as we close. He has a question asked, what is uh, your favorite character to voice in your career? That's a good question. Oh. Well, that's like having, like uh, other people describe it, like having uh, so many children. <laughs> you can't pick your favorite. It just depends what mood I'm in, actually, when people said, oh, uh, who, who do you like uh, doing? Which voice and all that? So it depends. Uh, um, what, what, uh, you know, out of nowhere, I could think of somebody very obscure that people say, oh, I, I, I don't know who that is or whatever. I remember being at a comedy club and part of uh, a little routine I was doing was imitating other comics. And like, you know, you heard me do uh, Gilbert Gottfried. Uh, I also do Emo Phillips, if you know who Emo is. <laughs> And uh, he hasn't been in many shows and all that that people would remember. But I did Emo's voice uh, on stage. And afterwards, 
one of the hosts said to me, uh, who was that? And I said, see, I thought it was an age thing. I said, well, that was Emo Phillips. He was in a comic. And the guy says, yeah, but who what, who is he? And I said, well, you know, you really uh, are dealing with somebody who knows these obscure characters. So uh, I said, you know, he's a guy that if you heard him, you'll say, yeah, that was him. <laughs> Uh, basically, Emo is like this, and he says, somebody tell me where I am today. Yeah. Let's see. Um, so just to Brian, kind of mood hold on. Okay, hold on. Yep. I think that's okay, good. So I'm just to think froze for a second, too. Hold on. All right, so... Um, if that's the question for um, DJ Game Studios, uh, we are going to come. Uh, let me see. Oh, I expected an hour, but it's, we almost an hour and a half. Pretty cool, you know. Just a uh, good conversation and uh, had a great time with the podcast since uh, we started with the intro. We're going to end with the same intro, the one where I kind of did the voices. Where we did the voices, a little quick video clip of Greg with throughout the voices in his career. So we're going to end with that. But again, uh, Ryan, any this uh, last um, ending comments? Yeah, thank you very much for your time, Greg, and again for uh, the opportunity to ask all the questions uh, that I was able to, and and we just appreciate your time and, and coming on the show. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm going to remember this as long as it takes me to walk to my car. And uh, <laughs> But, you know... Uh, <laughs> Let's yeah, see, uh... No, it's a great... Look how long we went, yeah. Yep, it's but, um, I hope it, it comes across so people know who I am now because uh, I'm not yeah. out there on the street corners doing this uh, everywhere I go. I just kind of do what I do. And, and again, maybe I just need help with, uh, with uh, the, the promotion part of things because some people say, oh, if I were you, I'd be on stage every night and doing this. I, I, I don't know. What do I do? <laughs> so I'm and I've been doing this 40 years. So I, I uh, pop up every once in a while somewhere. And, then I'd say, you know, that was me and this or that. And some people, j j okay, here's here's one. Maybe if you didn't know this. You ever see the movie The Other Guys with Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg? Uh, yeah. So, I think so I'm a voice in that, which, again, they don't give credit to. But when I tell people about it, and, and I can't show a picture of it because I was a voice, um, Mark Wall, since the movie's been out a while, Mark Wahlberg accidentally shoots uh, Derek Jeter and has to go back to learning in the police academy how to handle a gun. And uh, so he's in the academy scene uh, talking about whatever he learned his lesson. And from the back of the room, you hear me say, it's me saying, you should have shot A-Rod. <laughs> and... Uh, it gave it enough beat and time and all that. So when they showed it at the uh, uh, test showing, the, the theater went crazy laughing. And uh, and it surprised the director, I heard, because he just threw that in there just to see what would happen. Well, he got such a good reaction every time he showed it, they uh, left it in the movie. And that's me. And everybody says they remember what that, that particular line was said. But. Again, they don't say who did it, and it was me. <laughs> they, they, they should have. I don't know why. You know, they exclude those things. You know. Yeah. Well, they do have their their boundaries as to how many names they can show of actors in the project, and it's up to how to use. It's like with uh, Toy Story; they couldn't say Greg Berg voice of uh, Doors, uh, Pizza Planet Doors, or whatever to be so specific. But at least they gave me I hope it's credit. You guys might have just said, you know, extra voices or something like that. Mm. But that's, that's the last I'm going to watch that again. My voice voice career doing that. The little bits and pieces on the side of other things I do, like the, the speaking. And all. But thanks, guys. Thanks for having me over. Yeah, thank you so much, um, Greg, for the opportunity for us to get to know you. It was fun talking about everything. I, I love the story, everything about it, just especially the story about the um, Three Stooges and, you know, that episode in Muppet Babies with Fozzie Bear. So that's a major classic. And um, just, again, just to get to know you. And I'm actually going to be contacting you shortly because I do want to get a couple of autographs from you on my on my side. So 
I will talk to you about that um, later on. And um, either way, it's just uh, people want to look. Um, you find this information in the description. If you want to email him, again, if you want autographs or such, you, there's even script copies. You can get all that information. If you want to communicate uh, with um, Greg Bird with I Do Voices at Yahoo.com, I'll put it in there too. I'm going to add it right after the, the podcast. And then I'm going to, and don't forget too, if you want to have them in your, your cons and such, you go to Celeb uh, Works. Is it CelebWorks.com? Is that a, um, I don't know the full address, but it should bring it up right away. To okay, I'll look it up and I'll, I'll communicate with you, and I'll make sure I add that all within the next few minutes after the the show. So again, I uh, appreciate your time. Uh, thanks for everyone who stopped by. Um, um, Zach, Zach uh, came by, and then um, is it uh, Seismic and uh, DJ Game Studios? Um, I want to thank uh, Ryan Drayson for co-hosting. Appreciate you for stopping by and helping me out and. Being a part as you always are, and yeah, and um, my name is Kronos, and this is the legendary Greg Berg, and I appreciate you so much for being on the show. Thank you, and thanks everybody for watching, and I hope I answered some interesting questions for you. Thank you so much, and you have um, it's been a, a great evening, you know, evening with Greg Berg, and I'm going to end with the um outro, and um, if you want to stay on, Greg, or you can uh. Ryan or Greg, if you guys want to head out, you guys can stay and watch, and then afterwards we'll just say goodbye. Or, again, I'll just uh, – if any of you guys head out, I'll talk to you guys or text you guys after. Um, here we go, and we are ending. So I'll see you guys later. Until next time, this is the Chronos Show with um, Ryan and with um, the legendary Greg Burke. See you guys. till next time. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> this old olive press stamps out a super pizza, guys. Look! Hey, you can always have a black olive pizza with green olive topping. Never mind him, we've got to stop this heat ray. I've got an idea. Throw your turtle comms at the lenses. Those bells ought to do it. Well, I only hope the bullhorn amplifies the sound. Okay, I like red. It's my favorite color. <laughs> Maybe we should have took the blue one. <laughs> Who do I look like? Captain Nemo? Well, at least we didn't hit a garbage truck. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Wouldn't it be neat if this microscope was so powerful we could look right into the center of a molecule? A molecule? A molecule. Come on, guys. Those aren't fireflies, Kermit. They're electrons. That's what electricity is made of. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Well, come on, guys. Why don't we take a look? Manny's talking about us. Yeah, brothers and sisters should always be together. And now, get set for our fabulous halftime show, featuring the well-groomed young go-getters of Hooray for Everything! Oh, I love those kids! Hollywood's a tough town. Sure, I was a working avocado, but directors, they all had me pegged as the guacamole. Cut! Do you ever go to bed with two socks on and then wake up with only one? I do. Wow, I'd sure love to help you out. But I'm kind of, you know, tied up right now. We're Mo and Joe Wendell at your beck and call. We service all your head needs for winter, spring, and fall. Why don't snakes like to finger paint? Give up? Because they don't have any fingers. Waka, waka, waka. These are the kids running late for class. One more tardy and they may not pass. This is Jan revolting. <laughs> you know, I would have been here about an hour ago, but I was doing some shopping at a department store, and they had a power failure. Uh, isn't it sad uh, you build a comedy robot and give it life, and then it goes nuts and destroys you? Gilbert Gottfried here. I did a movie called Constipation. It never came out. How'd you do, ma'am? My name is Blaine. Voice teacher extraordinaire. Spy to headquarters, come in. Today, very lucky day for me. Me get crowed and two pair of planes. Andy, what are you doing in bed with Aunt B? Excuse me, how do you do? I am Miss Piggy, and I am looking for my long-lost lover, Kermie. I am his...
Mrs. Pork, Princess? Hiya, Charlie. You're gonna be locked up here for 25 years. I'm getting out in 20. Yeah, what about it, Louie? Uh, could I have the upper bunk? Be a pilot and go for a flight. Take a salty dinner in your jet some night. Oh, 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 it's all up to you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Every great comedian has to know how to make a whipped cream pie in case he should ever get into a pie fight. <laughs> Hey, you can't do that to me. Oh, a fat fighter, eh? Mm. Oh, yeah? <laughs> you will. <laughs>